You could argue that Lamborghini are going a bit soft. After years of making some of the maddest cars on the planet, they went and built the Urus, an SUV. And that car proved that people don't really want hardcore sports cars built for the track. The Urus proved that what people actually want is a high riding, comfortable SUV with big power and fancy all weather tires that made them feel safe and secure. They changed the script. But fast forward to 2022 and Lamborghini have had enough of being sensible. They've decided to release an updated Urus where they throw sensible in the bin. This is the Lamborghini Urus Performante. It wasn't designed to be comfortable. It wasn't designed to have a high ride height. And it comes with the kind of tires that might have you spinning backwards through a roundabout, screaming, why Lamborghini, why? Those tires are Pirelli P0 Trofeo R, the type normally used on race cars, not family SUVs. Sticky in the dry, terrifying in the wet, especially when combined with big power. Let's talk about this engine as I step on it. It's got the same twin turbo four liter V8 that you get in the standard Urus. However, this one now makes 666 horsepower and the same 850 newton meters of torque. That might not sound like an awful lot in today's world where super SUVs are generating in excess of 700 horsepower, but believe me, it shifts 0 to 62 in 3.3 seconds. That's 0.3 seconds quicker than the old car, 191 miles an hour flat out, and it is a rocket, believe me. This is one of those cars where you step in it and within 30 seconds, you know exactly what it's all about. Everything feels more immediate, the throttle, the steering, the way it changes direction. It's just an animal. Right, flying through a high speed corner now, look at that. <laughs> and the way it changes direction too. Oh, it's actually terrifying. I mean, it shouldn't be doing this, but it is. There are many reasons for the Performante's extra speed. The first is weight reduction. It's 47 kilograms lighter thanks to more abundant use of carbon fiber in the bonnet as an option on the roof, not to mention liberal use of the stuff on the redesigned front bumper, the wheel arches, and the rear diffuser. It's also more aerodynamically efficient with 38% more downforce and less drag thanks in part to bonnet vents that reduce front air pressure plus two rear spoilers, one on the boot lid and another above it inspired by the Aventador SVJ. Underneath, meanwhile, there's a new diff that allows more torque vectoring, plus a few other choice tweaks. The Urus Performante is also wider by 16 millimeters across both front and rear axles. It's lower by 20 millimeters, hardly surprising. But what is surprising is the fact that they've swapped out the suspension. The air suspension from the standard car is gone in favor of steel springs and dampers. The theory being that yes, they might be a bit less comfortable, but they're lighter, reduce the car's center of gravity and increase its responsiveness. If you want something even more crazy, look at the rubber. This car comes with an optional set of 23 inch rims. But if you're feeling really crazy, you can swap that for a set of 22s wrapped in Pirelli P0 Trofeo R's. Yes, it's official. Lamborghini have gone nuts. Lamborghini say these particular Trofeo R's were co-developed with Pirelli to be more versatile, allowing them to work on hot, dry racetracks and also cold, wet surfaces. But notably, they also ensured that for any road driving, I switched over to a set of the optional road biased P0s, something I definitely didn't argue with. And what I found when I hit the road was that despite its steel springs and dampers and more aggressive focus, the Urus Performante is actually pleasantly surprising to drive. What I'm finding is that the suspension has been tuned to be surprisingly compliant, especially for a car of this nature. And actually the reduction in weight seems to be helping to cope with some of the more imperfect sections of the road. It's actually surprisingly good. This is a perfectly good daily. The seats are actually fine as well. What you normally find in a high performance car, especially a Lamborghini, is that the seats aren't a lot of fun. But these, despite being a little bit on the firm side, are actually perfectly fine, even for long journeys. The other thing to note is that the seats actually still come with a massaging function. They haven't done away with that in order to save weight. 
Refinement wise, no real complaints there either. I do think they've removed some sound deadening material in order to reduce the weight as much as they can. And that's resulted in a tiny bit more road noise coming into the cabin. But that's not a huge problem for me, especially because it means you can now hear the exhaust a lot better than you could in the standard car. One downside, the interior is a little dated in the sense that Lamborghini haven't moved things on in this regard, but it's nice enough with a ton of Alcantara covering the dashboard, doors, seats, and ceiling. There's also now an optional black pack which deletes the chrome on the center console amongst other places, making it look more racy. So with all of that in mind, is there any real reason to not buy the Performante over the standard Urus? Maybe the price is 209,000 pounds, 21,000 pounds more than the standard car. But let's face it, if you got Eurus money, you probably got Eurus Performante money as well. So it's good on the road then. That's the biggest surprise, particularly because the Performante shines so brightly back on track. They've done a lot with the steering to make it feel a lot more engaging. It isn't brimming with feel and feedback but it does feel a lot more responsive than the standard car. It's also got rear wheel steering, which has been retuned to get involved with the steering a lot earlier than it otherwise might. And that means it's just super eager to get the nose in. One thing that sometimes lets these cars down are the brakes, but here I am about to go into a big braking zone right now. Slam it on, super stable, the back end especially. It gives you so much confidence, there's actually not quite enough bite at the top of the pedal. It feels a little bit spongy right at the top, but when you apply the pressure to the pedal, it absolutely stops this car. One of the things I wasn't really sure about was that 38% more downforce figure. It's easy to take that with a pinch of salt, especially with these big SUVs, but actually in these fast flowing bends, it feels so stable. You can't help but give Lamborghini credit because that extra downforce, or at least the lack of lift really keeps the car, <laughs> look at that. That's staggeringly fast to do that, Ben. Keeps it planted to the circuit. Right, this one I can take flat. Oh, it doesn't feel like it, but I can. Back on the brakes. Okay, we're in the twistiest section of the track now. And this is where the Urus will probably get found out just because of the sheer weight of the thing. Got a big hairpin coming up. Got to take it nice and slow but then on the power, nice and early actually. Just ride the curbs. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's hilarious this thing. Hilariously good. Around that right hander, you can really feel the torque vectoring come into play. And it isn't torque vectoring by braking, it's actually the diff that's getting the car rotated. So the nose just tucks in really nicely. The one thing I will say about this car is that it's so capable in a straight line and the brakes are so phenomenal. And that initial turn in, that corner entry is so good that after a while you start to build confidence and the car eggs you on so much that there will come a point when you carry too much speed into a corner and the weight and the mass of this vehicle does rear its ugly head and you can start to feel it. So it is a balancing act. It eggs you on, you've got to be careful. Don't bite off more than you can chew. At this point, you're probably assuming the Eurus Performante with its track focus has absolutely no off-roading capability. And it's true that Lamborghini have removed the three arguably pointless off-road driving modes found in the standard Eurus, but they've replaced these with something arguably even more pointless, but a lot of fun. Rally mode. If you thought this car was silly on track, wait till you find a piece of dirt and give it a bootful. The old car had three different off-road modes, but this thing has replaced them all with a single mode. And it lets you do this. Obviously, no one is ever gonna take their 209,000 pound Eurus Performante out into the middle of nowhere 
and skid about. Well, actually, are they? I don't know, maybe you would. Another thing you realize out here as well is that they've retuned the gearbox and so now it's a lot more snappy, especially when changing down. So you can get into a low gear, get into the power band and just bring that back end round at leisure. You can also tell that the torque vectoring is working a treat out here as well. Instead of just braking to torque vector, it's actually shuffling the power about across the rear axle left and right, which works a little bit more effectively than on the previous Urus. It's a bit like the drift mode in, say, a Volkswagen Golf R or a Ford Focus RS, except it's in a Lamborghini. Absolutely hilarious. What more can I say about this car? If you thought Lamborghini had gone a bit serious and they weren't really staying true to their roots of being a little bit deranged, the Eurus Performante proves without a shadow of a doubt that they are just as bonkers as ever. And I love it.